brought to you by Express Care Health and Skin Center. Get in, get out, get better. Welcome back. We are talking about stress. And Doc gave us some good A, B, C, D, E, F, G, some good tips. And so we also have some viewer questions now that we wanted to get to. Our first one comes from Noreen from GECO. She asks, can memory problems and constant worrying be a sign of stress? And how do I fix that? Yes, it really can. Um, you know, it's kind of like, like having too many screens open on your computer, you know. <laughs> it's just, it's overwhelming. And yeah, people start to have memory problems, concentration problems, um, forgetting things, and even having accidents, car accidents and um, other accidents at work or whatever, breaking things, yeah. These are, these are signs of, of overwhelm. And so when you notice something like that's happening to you, you're having memory or concentration problems, your mind needs to close some of those windows. And a good way to do that is to just sleep. If you can do that, if you can rest, if you can say no to some commitments, if you can just uh, limit some of the uh, factors that are that are going into that computer that will help you. Okay, Al Aliva from Tumon asks, I've heard that diarrhea and constipation and nausea are also some signs of stress. Yes, they are. Some people experience butterflies in their, in their tummy or diarrhea before a test or with extreme stress, people will vomit. Um, so again, everybody experiences things differently. Um, there's pretty well, I can't think of any symptom that can't be stress related. You know, they, people come in and they have all kinds of very unusual complaints sometimes, you know, feeling like the floor isn't in the right place or, or, or unusual pain or unusual patterns of illness. Um, and, and those can, are related to stress. So as a doctor, is it kind of hard for you to diagnose because it could be several it, things or yeah, every, well, because everyone's different? Well, we always make sure that, that the, you know, the physical is okay. And um, and there are certain things that kind of, I mean that you study that tip you off that that this is this is a very unusual pattern of illness and that you it might be stress but that's always the diagnosis of exclusion, but then if you realize that there's always a mind body connection most visits we can have a talk about what's going on in your life too. Okay, good. Our next question comes from John from Agate. He says, "How important is it having a support network? Sometimes when I'm stressed out, I just prefer to isolate myself." Mm, that's true, and I think it's especially true for many men. But um, I think that um, you 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 know yourself. If you need a little bit of chill time by yourself first. Uh, to do your own thing, whatever it is, um, to relax, that might be helpful. But the isolation, you have to be careful because when people get overwhelmed and isolated, they do sometimes shut out other people who want to help them, and then they sink down into a deeper depression and um, sometimes even commit suicide, and that's where we, we really want to intervene. So I think, um, John, if you're feeling like you need a little, little time by yourself, great, but make sure that at least some other person knows what you're going through. Okay, our next question comes from Shar from Aganya. What are some breathing exercises I can do when I'm feeling stressed? And oh, you did some that's earlier. so great. Well, there's two that I can tell you that are really simple to do, and you can Google these, and there's, they come from yoga, and you can learn yoga as well if you want to online or from, from studios here on Guam. So there's two. It's really simple. Breathe in on the count of four and out on the count of eight. So in on four, out on eight, and you feel it in your tummy, and you feel that relaxation as the breath goes out. That's really simple. The other thing you can do is sort of breathe in through one side of your nostril, hold, and then out the other side of your nostril. And I'm doing it quickly because it's on TV, but you, you do this quite slowly. Breathe in four, hold for at least four, breathe out again four to eight. And this balances the two hemispheres of the brain, and it allows calming chemicals to come into your brain and for you to relax. And it's a simple thing that you can do even at the stoplight, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so well, I have those, to do yeah. that at my desk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're really, really simple. You can Google, the, it's called alternate nostril breathing, that one. Or the other one is basically breathe in on four, breathe out on eight. Those are simple things to and do. And you mentioned yoga, so that's another thing that yeah. you would recommend? Yoga, sure. And you can, again, Google yoga um, exercises or breathing exercises. Meditation has been proven to help people with their stress and r improve their immune system and to help their overall well-being. So that, those are things that you can do that are completely free and don't involve any prescriptions. 
All right, it's kind of clear the mind then. Yeah. Okay, and our last question comes from Ronnie from Dedido. How about positive thinking? Does it really work? <laughs> <laughs> it really does work because, you know, if you can find the good, the silver lining in anything, you're going to have a better day. And uh, if you focus on the negative and you think about it and talk about it all the time, well, that's going to color your day too. So, But as far as your health, it does physically help you because when you're thinking good thoughts, you're releasing positive chemicals in your body, again, that are going around and doing healthy things for you rather than those negative destructive ones. There's something I sometimes call the invisible backpack. Somebody will come into the office and they'll be all slumped over and you know, they've got pain here and there and they've got all kinds of things going on. And you can just see that you know they've got all these problems in that backpack. And if they could just also understand that and start taking out one brick at a time day by day, their load will lighten, they'll sit a little taller and life will be a little bit better. So those positive thoughts are incredibly important. All right, well, you're just hearing your voice is really calming and soothing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so any last tips that you'd like to leave with our viewers back on stress? Um, well, stress isn't all bad, like you said. Um, just remember, whatever you're going through now, you will overcome it, like, like you overcame some things you went through in the past. And that's another thing to always refer to is like, well, I've been through that thing, so I can do this thing. And you'll never get more than you can handle, especially if you, if you get a little help from your friends. Okay, Doug, thanks again for coming in for all that encouraging advice. We're going to have to take a quick time out, but next week we will be talking about aneurysms. Send us your questions to healthylivingatkwam.com. We are back to close out the show right after this.